Why any a groan left my mouth while I dig my head in a pillow, shutting my eyes? Why any she screamed loud enough that even a dead person would wake up from the grave? Then what hope I could ever have? I got up pressing my fingers on my forehead. She literally gives me a headache. What's the matter? I yelled at her in the same loudspeaker. Please come downstairs. It's an emergency. She yelled out. Letting out a frustrated sigh, I ran down the stairs without wearing my slippers even. I know what's wrong with her. She messed up the kitchen and I could see it properly. Who asked you to experiment your cooking skills? You don't know how to cook then why do you try even? I yelled at her as I saw the worst state of my tiny kitchen. But if you won't experiment, how would I would become a professional chef? She whined while brushing off the dust from the dress. How professional you bra you don't know how to boil an egg or toast a slice of bread and you are telling me here that you will become professional chef I scoffed and sneezed the whole kitchen was blasted and the black smoke was spread all around the house you only know how you scold me Vianney wait let me order some food we will try making food sometime later she said grabbing her mobile phone from the counter i will be more better if you don't try i almost pleaded maria burst into a laugher making me more pissed off i ran to my bedroom which was upstairs to get ready for an office reaching the bedroom i went to the bathroom to take a warm bath after 10 minutes i came back in my room and walked to my wardrobe from where i chose a black dress I did a light and decent makeup on my face and then wearing my stilettos and grabbing my black bag from the wardrobe, I walked downstairs. After driving for almost half an hour, finally I reached the office. As soon as I took my first step inside the office, Miss Zoe came to me running. I'm sorry Miss Zoe but my stupid alarm didn't wake me up. I lied as I couldn't come up with more better context. The boss, Mr. Jin Jungkook, is calling you in his cabin. Hurry up. She started patting on my shoulder to make me move forward. Yeah, Miss Zoe, I am going. I started rushing to my desk from where I picked up some files. After picking up the files, I went to his cabin while fixing my hair. I knocked at the door while clearing my throat. As soon as he scolded, voice echoed in my ear which was to come in, I entered inside his cabin. Good morning, sir. There are some files you needed to check. I said, placing the files on his desk. I looked at my right side when I felt someone was standing there looking at me. My eyes widened and feet frozen on the ground as it was Christopher, my old boss. It was probably six months ago when I used to work in Stone Architect and Development Company. It is known as one of the biggest companies in the Seoul, but it's not more bigger than June's company where I work now. It was a Monday while I was working on my laptop as usual. Then Mr. Christopher walked to me and tapping on my desk, he ordered me to follow him to his cabin. I nodded and burned down. I shut down my laptop and walked to his cabin while grabbing some of my files as I thought he needed to check them. I placed the files on the desk. Sir, here are some files you need to check. I said giving him an awkward smile. Mr. Christopher is 33 years old man who has wife and two small babies but still he is the man who eyes to himself. Sometimes I saw him staring at me and biting his lips but I let it go cause the job provides me high wages and I'm quite happy with that. Why you are so hard working Vyan? You know you are the best employee I ever had. This time you will be given a bonus too. He said putting his hand on his face while staring at me. It's my job to work hard and the company already pays me enough. I don't need any bonus. I said going at him, you know that this habit of yours makes me more crazy. He said behind his lips. Excuse me, I asked crunching my eyebrows as I was not able to digest what he said. Don't pretend, Mar uh, come, I will give you some here. He said get, getting up from his chair while fixing his tie, I stepped back and I was about to go out from his cabin when my hand from the behind.
Why and come on, I will give you whatever you want, just think about it, he said grabbing my wrist with his both hands. Tears started to roll down from my eyes when my hair clenched into face, my nose was playing badly while face was boiling with anger. Kicked him with full force until he fell down on the floor, yeah, I got some power. I resigned from this job, so called job right now, I yelled at him and ran outside while wiping my tears. End of the flashback and this is why I got startled seeing him in Mr. Jungkook's cabin. Mustering up some courage, I clear my throat to catch Mr. Jungkook's sight. Mr. Jungkook, you have meeting in few minutes. In, it's in the Les Mary Hotel. I'll be waiting for you in the car. I said, pushing the tears back into my eyes. Secretary Vyan, is everything okay? He asked, looking up through the laptop. Yes, Mr. Jungkook, everything is fine. I said, walking outside the cabin. What's wrong with Vyan? She came and then left. She didn't uh, tell, show me today's schedule, but it's not bothering me at all. What's bothering me is that Miss Vyan's teary eyes when she left the cabin. What happened to her all of a sudden? Is she okay? Then my eyes fell on Christopher with whom I'm gonna sign a deal in few days. I noticed him staring at Yamayan from behind and then his leave which made me boil with anger. Seriously, dare he to look at him. Before I could get up and in his face, he spoke out. Your secretary used to work in my company but then she left. He said smiling at me though I was fooled with anger. I clear my thought and forcing a smile I looked at him. There must be a reason behind it. Otherwise why she will leave your company? I asked while hand falled into fist under the table. He looked at me and devilish smile crept on his lips before he speak out. Actually, I, uh, how I tell you, she wanted to play, but I refused, so she resigned. It's as simple as that. He smiled, looking at me. I tried to breathe properly, but it just stuck inside my mouth. I got up, walked to him, and went where the sun doesn't shine, and I was sure after that he wouldn't be able to walk. Hey, don't get anything wrong. Don't you dare to talk nonsense about her. She's mine, and she's innocent. Then I left my cabin and walked towards where where Vyan was already waiting for me which made my heart beat like crazy. I plopped inside the car and asked the driver to start driving to Les Mary Hotel. Secretary Vyan, will you please show me to the schedule? I asked when I saw her lost in her own thoughts. I am sorry sir, I forgot. Wait, I will show you right away. She said holding a schedule which was placed on her I was looking at her. She was looking so upset and afraid I wanted to throw all the sorrows away from her. I want her to be happy and always keep smiling which melts my heart in no seconds. You have a meeting in Les Mary Hotel where we were heading and after that you will have to. She left the sentence in middle while biting her lower lip. She looked so nervous at the moment which raised anxiety in me. What happened secretary Vyan? I asked looking at her. Does she like me too or maybe it was my just delusion? Your mom arranged a blind date for you and I couldn't refuse her. What? Okay fine, I'll go on blind date but I will you will accompany me. What would I do there? Mr. Jungkook, it's your blind date. I think you should go alone. Your mom will be happy if you are listen to her and go on blind date alone. She said in a bit low voice while looking through the open window. I can't get why she doesn't wanna go with me. Isn't she jealous? I am not asking for your point of view, Sakati Vyan. I am informing you clearly. I said making her nod her head in yes. Siok Jin, uh, you will have to send more workers in a construction site, he said while playing with a pen in his hand. But Cookie, we have already sent a lot of workers on construction site also. If we send more workers, then we will have to pay them more wages. He said taking a sip of an orange juice. I know, but if we want to complete this project within three minutes, then we months, then we will have to increase the number of workers. Miss Vyan, could you be able to send me all the data regarding this project? I mean, if you are okay with this, he said looking at you. Mr. Jungkook, I have already sent you all the information regarding this project. You said gently smiling at him. 
Jungkook is so lucky having a perfect secretary like Wayan. She is good in everything he said, making me feel proud. Exactly, she is not like my secretary, who is the main reason why I reach at every hour. I don't think so. I even need to mention my secretary here. He said, making everyone laugh. Yeah, I'm lucky having Wayan. He said, staring at you with a smile around his lips. You looked around to hide your blushing face, which was noticed by Jungkook as a smirk crept around his lips. Today's meeting and here uh, we will discuss further on another day. He said, getting up and buttoning up his coat. You both were walking to the outside of the hotel when Jane Jungkook stopped for a while and looked behind at you. Miss Wayan, do I look good? I mean, he said, trying to form some words. You look handsome, Mr. Jungkook. You said, looking at him. Jungkook's face turned red, hearing the compliment from you. You also look beautiful. He said, staring at you from head to toe, you blushed in a response and walked forward. Reaching the car, you both sat inside and drove to another hotel where Mrs. Jeon arranged a blind date for Jungkook with Melissa, the daughter of Mr. John Jungkook's business partner. You both stepped inside the hotel while giving a smile to each other, walking ahead. Good morning, sir. This way, please. He greeted you with both with a smile. He guided you both to the beautifully decorated table which had candles and flowers on top of it. The lights were magnificently lit which gave the hotel more romantic atmosphere. Jungkook sighed looking at the arrangements, mom overdo everything. He said looking at your nervous face, you were really jealous as you looked like Jungkook secretly but being his personal secretary, you kept your feelings to yourself. All of a sudden, you heard the creaking sound of heel behind you. You turned around and saw a girl walking towards your table. Boldly, she was wearing a red bodycon dress along with red high heels and matching shining clutch. Her hair was blonde while makeup was plastered on her face, making her look like a fictional witch. Jungkook looked up through his phone and sigh left his mouth. Mr. Jin Jungkook cried. She asked walking closer to him. Yeah, Jun Jungkook, he said, forcing a smile, you were getting jealous, but you somehow maintained to stay normal. Well, I'm Melissa, you can call me Melly. She said, rolling a strand of her hair behind her ear, Miss Melissa, please have a seat. He said, offering her a seat. While you sat on the chair facing Jungkook, Mr. Jun ordered to set up the table for two persons, but later Jungkook asked the waiter to bring one more chair for you. There was a silence for a moment, but then Melissa spoke out. I really can't believe that I'm on a blind date with Jeon Jungkook, she said while giving him a sheepishly smile, showing off her branded bag. I also can't believe I'm on a blind date with you, he said and scoffed. You press your lips hard so that you couldn't laugh. She gave Jungkook a toothy grin while tucking some strands of her hair behind her ear as she wanted to show off her diamond earrings, so tell me something about yourself. He said casually while staring at your face as if he wanted to depict your facial expressions. Oh, well, I'm born rich, a single daughter of my parents. My dad gave me everything I needed. He never said no to me for anything. I love to dance even if I have my own love where I go at night and enjoy. It really attracts me, especially she winked, continuing. The waiter also walked to your table who placed the food and wine on it and then left. So where I was, oh yeah, I love beauty. Well, I'm very rich. We have three bangalows in Korea, two in US and three farmhouses in Japan along with some apartments. I had nine luxury cars and three belong. She was speaking out but Changku cut her off. Miss Melissa, the food is getting cold. I think we should have it first. He asked, taking a glance at you. He noticed that you were glancing at the food time to time, which meant you didn't eat anything as usual. Oh, yeah, please, she said with a wide smile. While all you were eating, Melissa looked at you, making an annoying face. By the way, who is she? What she is doing with him? Oh, you seem like Mr. Jungkook's secretary. It would be more better if you get lost from here and give us some time to talk to each other, she said, pointing at you with a fork in her hand. How dare you to talk to her like that? Hmm? Who the hell are you to say nonsense about Wyan? 
who said that she is my secretary she is my girlfriend i love her so much i just came on this planet to reject stupid girl like you he said with his nose flaring jango kid when someone pointed you or make you feel uncomfortable he would surely if there would be a man instead of melissa after hearing that your eyes grew wider while you somehow gulped down the food You couldn't believe in your ears that you looked at Jungkook in a disbelief way. Jungkook looked at you with a smile, and fixing his handcuffs, he got up and walked towards you, placing the fork on the table. You looked up at him with your big eyes, which were wide as a kiss on your cheeks. Come, Ruby, let's go," he said, caressing your hair. You were in a sweat, shock. Your heart was beating heavily, while butterflies were fluttering into your stomach. You didn't figure out that he was doing all that to get rid of Melissa, or he was seriously expressing his feelings to you. He then held your hand, making you stand up. He grabbed your wrist while looking into your eyes with a smile. You must be tired after all this don't worry your cook will give you a quality time he said your eyes twinkled as you looked at him frown You both were sitting in a car heading back to the office mustering up some courage you looked at him clearing your throat Mr Jungkook why are you put you lie you are looking around while your hands fixing the lace of your dress Did I lie today? No, I didn't lie for anything. Don't you tell me that my confession more seemed like a silly joke to you? He said and tilted his head to your side while raising his eyebrows. Your cheeks turned red as he leaned closer. Mr. Jungkook, before you complete your sentence, making you flinch. I know, Levi, and I know. He said, leaning kiss. It's been a week since you both confessed to each other. Right now, you were in the meeting room where Jungkook was talking to his business partners. After finishing the meeting, you were picking up the files when Jimin came towards you. Hey, Wayan, you look stunning to your day. He said, giving you a soft smile while unconsciously staring at you. It was. Sh- Thanks, Mr. Park. You said while glancing at Jungkook. Well, I need your number for a business purpose. If you don't mind, can I? He asked and grinned. You thought for a while and then gave him your number. Later in Jungkook's cabin, he needed my number for a business purpose. Trust me, Cook. You said. Is all friendly? Who? Hmm? He said. Then his eyes fell on me, which showing an evil had came into his mind. I'm sorry but no one can resist he said Let me help them he said playfully smirking